Hi, I'm Christine. I'm here in Romania with my family for two weeks, and we've just arrived in the city of Yash, which is up by the Ukrainian border. This was actually my first time to Yash. I lived in Bucharest and Brasov in the mid-90s, when Romania, newly free from communist rule, was still finding its feet. But my family had never been to Romania, so it was great to explore it together. Yash is one of the major cities of Romania, located in the northeast region called Moldova. This is not to be confused with the separate country of Moldova, located northeast of Romania. We found Yash to be very traditional and laid back, with some very beautiful and well-maintained spaces, and others that were rather run down. The people were exceptionally helpful and friendly. Orthodox churches were abundant, going along with the very traditional nature of this town. Moldova in general is known for its churches and monasteries. We visited the Golia Cathedral in central Yash. It was built in the 16th century and has a tower of over 30 meters. Many devout worshippers were present here, even on a Monday morning. We took a look in the gardens and inside. Okay, so we're sitting at Piazza Uniri. This is uh, the Union Square in the middle of Yash. Here's my son Martin. He's having a lot of fun feeding the pigeons over here. Show them the pigeons. Uniri is one of Yash's main squares, surrounded by bars and bistros and what looks like a cinema from the 50s or 60s. A lot of events are held here. Even a protest against the national government occurred here shortly after we left. Nearby is the National Opera House with its promenade and park. It's the oldest national theater in Romania and one of the most prestigious. Also facing the park is the Metropolitan Cathedral, the largest historical Orthodox church in Romania. The smaller church of Sfântul Gheorghe stands adjacent to it. Along the boulevard of churches, we found street performers, vendors of souvenirs and traditional crafts, and a few beggars. Though quite traditional, Yash seems to be also modernizing in many ways and learning to enhance her traditional beauty for a younger and more modern population. We found the Church of the Tre Yerar with its engraved walls to be a great example of timeless beauty. And the marvelous Palace of Yash astounded us with its rich opulence and grandeur. The front entrance looked like a stately official building with a full-service mall to the side. And behind the palace was a large and elaborate garden with shops, restaurants, carnival rides, and lawns. Here I am at the Yash Palace, and it's, it's just amazing here. It's absolutely gorgeous fountains and the palace and beautiful gardens everywhere. You can see here people sitting in the, the beautiful gardens. The 
The Yash Palace of Culture served as the administrative and justice palace, but in 1955 it became the home of four museums that make up the Moldavia National Museum Complex. Construction of the palace began in 1434 and went through many changes and expansions throughout the centuries. World War I put a halt on construction as it was used to house Romanian and Russian troops, but it was finally completed in 1925. So here I am at a park in Yash, right next to the palace. And um, over here on the right, there's a there's actually a really big shopping mall, and we've just been through it. We've seen, yeah, all kinds of shops and, and restaurants there that are just unbelievable variety and assortment of, of goods that's there. When I was here in the 90s, uh, it was amazing how limited the supplies were in in shops and you know as far as even getting something to eat for lunch it was just very basic you could only really find the essentials in those days and so you can really see now how, how much has changed since Romania joined the EU. Despite its rocky economic and political past, Romania has enjoyed a rich literary history with writers such as Caragiale, Rebranu, Eliade and Eminescu making their mark on Romanian identity and on the world. We visited Copo Park where monuments and a museum to Eminescu are located. The Mihai Eminescu Museum is something of a temple to Eminescu's spirit. It houses a number of artifacts and really gives visitors a feel for Eminescu's personality and the nature of his work. It was time to leave Yash, so after a quick trip for supplies, we got in our Dacha rental car and set the Google Maps to our destination southward in the mountains of Moldova. We first saw a lot of grassy plains dotted with small churches, roadside vendors, and horses pulling carts. Then, as the scenery became more hilly, the houses and churches took on a more alpine look. Something really funny we encountered en route were a number of large storks sitting in their nests high up on the telephone poles along the village roads. It was quite an entertaining ride, despite the bumpy roads, crazy drivers, and dizzying curves through the mountains. We were surprised by the very traditional look of the villagers and the presence of random cows and goats grazing along the road. Finally, we arrived at Petro Voda. So this morning we left Yash, and we traveled for a few hours um, you know, just over kind of rough roads um, into the more mountainous area. We're in the Carpathians. We're kind of slowly making our way through the Carpathians. And, and we're a little, in a little town called Petru Voda, which, as you can see, has beautiful natural scenery and lots of cute little cottages. And it has also a really wonderful monastery that we were able to visit today. The Moldova region of Romania in the Upper East Corner is famous mostly for its incredible churches and monasteries. Some of its most renowned Orthodox churches are located in Suchava, Voronets, and Bukovina, with typical curved roofs and towers and brightly colored frescoes painted on the outside. The monastery complex we visited in Petru Voda was lesser known, but still quite an elaborate and beautiful example of the Romanian Orthodox style. 
So here I am at one of the beautiful churches in Moldova. As you can see, the, the frescoes are painted on the outside of the church. So Martin, what do you think? It's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah? Could you tell what any of the pictures were about? Zion. Zion. That line right there. Okay. That cool. just told me. Cool. <laughs> After encountering a few pilgrims, some random goats, and getting stuck on a road that was blocked by a tractor, we returned to our pensione for some R&R. &R. Martin was still full of energy and was happy to find a trampoline behind the building. While he was jumping, I was startled by some loose cows who were charging toward me. They were only interested in the grass, however, and I had to laugh about this crazy mix of animals and kids. We ended our time in Moldova with a hike along the river and a morning drive past mountains and lakes. This beautiful and unique area seems mostly untouched by tourists from outside Romania, though the monasteries attract Romanian pilgrims from near and far.